This is the cannon that we're going to clock, okay, the physics cannon. Now, most of you guys, when you go to um, Home Depot, are looking for something to, um, uh-oh, now we're in trouble. You're looking for something to um, improve your house, okay? I, when I go to Home Depot, for my part, am sometimes looking for things, guys, can I interrupt? I'm looking for things that might be useful for physics demonstrations. So I went to Home Depot with a tennis ball. And with the tennis ball, I went, and I believe it's that the tennis ball does not fit in a two inch pipe. This is sad, the black pipe comes in like two inch and three inch and four inch widths, right? And a tennis ball does not fit in a two-inch pipe. You just can't get that thing to fit in there. Not at all. Okay? Which is sort of sad, right? And a three-inch pipe is way too big. In fact, we used to have a... I don't see it up there anymore, but we used to have a, a tennis ball that we used. We had to wrap it with tape so it would fit snugly in a three-inch pipe, right? What we need is something that's like two and a half inches, right? Well, you don't find that in the plumbing department. You find that in the electrical department. Yes? Okay. So this is two and a half inch, I believe, gray plastic conduit. And really what it is is, is this end is it like flares out, you know, bell end, and then you can like glue the next piece of conduit into this. Imagine wires that big around. Wow. Okay. That's a lot of wires or something like that. Let's see if I can get this uh, off of here using the uh, conventional... Uh, Redneck, uh, oh, well, that's never going to work. The conventional redneck tool, which is a vice grips. All right. Almost. There we go. Okay. Now, on the inside there, hello? On the inside there, Okay, there's a couple wires, aren't there a couple wires? Yeah. yeah, there's a couple wires, and those wires are connected to the outside. And the notion here is that what we're going to do is we're going to fill this with methanol and oxygen. Well, it's full of oxygen now, or some oxygen, right? And then we're going to send a little spark across there. And I think you saw last, yesterday we shot a uh, little rubber stopper, and that was pretty fast. And it would have uh, nailed Taylor right in the back, only we had it, she moved wisely, right? It was like, pow, I thought that was funny. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to fill this up. We're going to stick the tennis ball somewhere about here. We'll have fuel and air about here. We'll screw that on really tight. Okay, guys, please don't. Okay, we'll screw that on really tight. And when it explodes, the only thing it'll do, well, it's either going to send that end off, right? So don't stand directly behind the cannon, okay? Or it's going to send the more likely the tennis ball flying this way really, really quite fast. Okay, this is the notion. Now... Um, and our goal is to, on the Cannon Lab, is to figure out what the velocity of that thing is. Yeah? Okay? Um, and so, <laughs> what we're going to do, I don't know if you noticed, but this thing's on wheels, and so what happens is, you know, in the past we've tried to have people like just time it as it goes by. This is a joke, not really. Okay? But, but uh, uh, obviously it's going so, so fast that really nobody can even see the thing. You could see it in film if you go frame by frame. You can see a little streak on there. Right? That would be one way to do it. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to look at this thing. And since this is momentum, if this shoots a cannonball that way, isn't the cart going to go that way? And won't the momentum be the same? Yeah, I'm thinking it will be, right? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go, here's the little cart with wheels. Here's our cannon. And it's just all balanced so that it pretty much balances on there. And what this thing's going to do is it's going to have some initial velocity. That's what we want. The final velocity will be... Zero. It's, in other words, it's going to roll to a stop after going some distance x. Okay. Now it seems to me if we know the time that it takes to go that distance and we know the final velocity is zero, isn't that three things? And three things is all we need to solve a kinematic equation? Yeah, so on your little sheet, you could draw this little diagram and then you could say, let's see, the formula is x equals one-half vi plus vf times c. Isn't that our formula? 
And isn't the final velocity zero? So what's vi? vi is 2x over t. Is that what vi is? Right? So basically what we're saying is that the, the initial velocity is twice the average velocity. The average velocity would just be x over t. Why is it twice the average velocity? What's it doing? Why is the initial velocity twice the average velocity? Starts fast, ends up not moving, right? So a velocity time graph looks like this. Yeah? So the average velocity is somewhere in here. Isn't that twice? The initial velocity is twice that? Yeah? So anyway, that, that's what we have there, right? Okay. Now, to this end, we need some people who are willing to time. And let's get, we need several timers because it's sort of hard to time when this thing goes boom. Sometimes people like press the stopwatch twice because it's kind of exciting. Okay. Um, so let's get three people that are willing to time. We need timers. Timers. We need timers. Oh, you'll time. All right. Thank you for volunteering. That's so nice. Timers. That's amazing. Okay. Uh, we also need to measure the recoil distance. And when we measure, when you measure this, not that really our certainty is going to be that close, but this thing literally is measuring from the tip of this to wherever it is. So put the tip of this on the little black line where we start. Okay? Who's a measurer? Who would like to measure? AJ? And that is so nice of you. All right. I need, what we do is we shoot the thing at different targets. Okay, I just got these, these cardboard boxes, the notion being that I think they're going to slow down, the, the, the projectiles are going to slow down as they go through these. And I just know I want to avoid like breaking a door. So I need someone to do a little, what we're going to do is lay these out on the floor in front of the box. I think Nick wants to do that. Yeah, Nick hmm? Oh yeah? Yeah. All right. That's good. Okay. And then, Nick, you get to appoint someone to help you. Now, one of the jobs, since Nick volunteered to do this, one of the jobs that goes with that is that you have to also be the fireman. Because sometimes when the ball comes out of the cannon, it's burning. And so it lights those boxes on fire, right? And so really what, all I want you to do is, if it's safe to do so, just tow them outside so they don't burn up inside the commons, because that'll set off the smoke detectors. Just carry them quickly outside. And, if you know, if you think it's safe, you could stamp them out. But you know, if you're wearing flammable clothing, maybe not. You know, we could all just get marshmallows or something like that, right? Um, <laughs> also, try to keep track of, of where the ball is, where would it go? Because sometimes it goes through the boxes, still on fire, and just goes in some random direction. And one time we, we had it between in the hallway between the office and those bathrooms, right? It was in that hallway. The lights were off, and it was just flaming away, right? And Judy Bruce, the former bookkeeper, comes up to me and goes, "Chris, Chris, Chris." There's, there's a burning tennis ball in the hall. I don't know why she came up to me, right? Um, you know, so instead of a flaming, a burning bush, right, it was a burning tennis ball, you know, so somewhat less. Yeah. You're going to lay them out in front of the can. I'll show you, right? Okay, now, the other thing we need to do is we're going to fire. We're going to just go right out there in the home. We're going to fire it toward these doors. Okay, I haven't broken a window yet. Knock on wood. Where's some wood? There it is, right? Okay. Um, but I really don't, I deeply don't want somebody to just go wandering right out in front of the path of the cannon. Okay, so some people, I think three or four people, if they could stand along those, those doorways there, and just when I'm about to fire, just sort of, if somebody tries to go out, just sort of tackle them or something. Don't tackle them, <laughs> but just kind of, you know, whoop, you know, look out, whoa, pay attention, right? I think just seeing somebody with a Tesla coil and a cannon on the floor would tend to give them pause, right? <laughs> but kids will be, they're going to be texting, they're going to be like, because they're on their way to the bathroom, and then you got to like reply to all your text messages, right, on the way back. <laughs> Who wants to do that? I need three people. Doesn't have to be boys. Emily, Emily will. Okay, you'll be one of the security people. <laughs> you know you can do it. 